let me let me just quickly with the Makia Bryant tweet. My point about that tweet, which got everyone nuts, was that fat children, fat teenagers, are looked at as threats as adults. It may not be right. I wasn't saying she deserved to die because she was fat. I said the cop made a split second decision because he saw the girl with a knife uh, uh, charging another girl, uh, you know, or about to thrust a knife into another girl, which is a potentially fatal injury. I did not say she deserved to die because she was fat. The fat activist movement came for me again. I don't remember the last time they came for me, but the fat activist movement. Uh, has come for me. And this is why I'm actually trying to get in better shape because uh, fat people at at one time were a jolly, sad, but jolly people. Meaning fat people were sad when they were by themselves, but when they were with others, they had to convince you that they weren't sad and they were like, it's fun, we're having fun, I'm fun. You know, now fat people are like, they're like rude and they're, it's true. I don't want to be a part of this community anymore because they've become, they've become like moralists and they're, they're, they're saying that fat is uh, like a mark of achievement or a mark of virtue that you should love your body no matter what. Well, maybe I'm not telling anyone not to love themselves, but I'm saying you should love yourself uh, within reason. Do you see what I mean? You shouldn't just love yourself no matter what. There's got to be a point where you stop loving yourself. There's got to be a line. Like body positivity. Is there ever a line where you're not allowed to be positive about your body? There was a guy when I grew up, he was 1,100 pounds. He had, when he died, he they had to cut part of his house out and take him out. <laughs> they had to, they had to do a construction project on, his name was Walter, he's from Long Island, some fucking person will find it. They had to cut out part of his house to get him out of the house. Did he really need to hear... <laughs> That he was beautiful the way he was. I'm not saying it's necessarily always a negative message. But I'm saying between hating yourself because you're a little, you got some pudge. And needing to be cut out of a wall. Is there a happy medium where we can, we can tone it down with the love of the bodies? Can we tone it down with the love of the bodies? Here's the other thing about fat people. Fat people are now pretending they don't know they're fat. And they don't, like, fat people are now acting like fat has no negative health uh, implications and that it's just not harder to do things. They're like, oh, it's a social construct. Not always. Walk upstairs. That's not a social construct. It just sucks. Walking upstairs is hard. When I do it with him, when I get to the third or the fourth flight, I have to stop and pretend I'm saying something profound or, or pretend to notice something this where I'll be like, oh, you know what I just thought of? To just catch my breath because I don't want to keep going. You know you're fat. You know you're unhealthy. If you're a fat person, you know you're unhealthy. Can you play Lizzo's thing where she's talking about the body positive movement being co-opted by thin people? And I'm not saying if you're fat, you should hate yourself or you should be unhappy with yourself or you should be, uh, you know, made fun of or shamed or we don't want any of that. But people, and not everyone has to be uh, rail thin, but we need to calm down with the love of the bodies that are, like, being broken. Lizzo said that the body positive movement was being used by people who, who like, really like their bodies, genuinely, like thin people, are getting involved and saying, hey, I love my body. And Lizzo's like, yes, we get it. Everyone should love their body, but this movement is for fat people and Fat women of color specifically. It's on Lizzo's TikTok. Yes. Here we are. The, the, and the thing with the McKee Bryan thing, it's a tragedy that she died. It sucks. I'm very upset about it. Um, that anyone is that dies, that anybody is killed by the police, that anybody's in that situation. 
Um, it, 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 it's a tragic situation, but I was not fat. I was not saying she deserved to die because she was fat. This is, this is, uh, this is insane. Um, what I was saying is that a fat person wielding a knife, I was 16. I was chubby, not that chubby. I, I got chubbier later, but like a fat person wielding a knife, it's, it, most people look at it and they're they're afraid. You don't register as a child. You don't register as a child when you're a fat person. Will unless unless you're a chef. If you're fat and you have a knife, you have to be a chef, and you have to be preparing a meal. But in any other situation, a fat person with a knife is very scary. It's true. I I don't. I don't mean to disrupt anyone's sense of reality, but it, it's not nice what happened, and I don't like it. But I also don't deserve uh, to be called out by the fat activists. Here we are. Would you wake up and trade places with somebody who was on the heavier side? I'm glad she asked because this is giving me very much when that sociologist Dr. Jane asked that room full of white people, raise your hand if you want to be treated like how black people are treated in this country. Or raise your hand if you would wake up and be black tomorrow. And nobody raised their hand. And that's because they know that there's some systemic bullshit that happens to black people that does not happen to them and will never happen to white people. That's correct. So, yes, if I asked you right now, have you been shamed? Yes, you've been through a lot. Yes, it sucks being a person in this society because we have to go through so much to love ourselves but would you switch places with a fat person's body tomorrow you would not because you know that there's a whole system that oppresses fat people that you do not well, experience and that you will never it. experience wait a minute hold on the system that oppresses fat people i don't know i look at the restaurants and the portions and the servings and the drive throughs and i think fat people are pretty well cared for in this country. They're pretty well taken care of. I don't see the oppression of fat people when there is fast food restaurants and all you can eat buffets and there's Postmates and Grubhub and DoorDash and people will literally show up to your house and put a sandwich in your mouth for you. I don't see fat people being, uh, I mean, literally, there are shows about food. On there is a network dedicated to food. There are countless Instagram. I on my Instagram, it shows me like hot dudes and and uh, nice houses, and then just those exploding desserts. You know those desserts that explode? It's very sexual. It's like it's a dome that's over it, and they they pour something on it, and then it just explodes. All I see on Instagram is those desserts. So it's weird to me that she says there's a system that's against fat people, but literally. Everything from what you put in your mouth to even what you look at every day is to entice and excite fat people. Am, am I wrong about that? Yeah. I know that people go through things for being fat. I hooked up with a guy once who did nothing but grab my fat and scream at the top of his lungs. It was very disturbing. He was grabbing, my, and this is a fetish that I found out people have, and it has to do with something in childhood, I don't know. But he would just grab my fat and mash it together, and he'd go, ah! <laughs> And it was off-putting at the time. I was trying to enjoy it. He was having fun with it. But I understand that that's what happens to people. Truly, literally, he was sucking my dick, but then he just decided to start mashing my fat together, and he went, ah! Ah! I did that for several minutes, but then I read about that, and that's something that's more normal than not normal. So what I'm saying is that I understand what she's saying, but I also have issues with it. C continue this. Okay. So let's remember body positivity. Yes, we want to end harassment and shame, but we also are working to dismantle a system that oppresses fat people. What is that system that Would oppresses fat people, though? This is what I'm curious about. And I genuinely want to be educated. I understand that fat people have it tougher and some people have medical issues and some people, you know, are not. It's not their fault that they're as fat as they are. Um my mother used to complain because my mother had a thyroid problem. Mm -hmm. 
My mother did. She had a, a slow thyroid. And she would tell us that all the time at Outback. She would say, I have a thyroid condition. She would tell us about it at the Outback. And I know that that happens. I'm not blind to that. I get it. It's not all nurture. Some of it is nature. My mother would explain that to me. But uh, continue. I want to see the rest of this. Oh, that was all of it. That was all of it? Yeah, just one TikTok, 60 seconds. Well, that's okay. I saw something else. But it's, it's uh, we get it. We, we know where, where we're going here with that. And I'm just saying that I have a lot of love and respect for the body. But can we put on one of the really big people that talks about fat phobia and fat acceptance? Mm. Let's put on, because I'm trying to understand the system that oppresses fat people. Okay. So an F-bodied person? F -bodied. What the fuck is F-bodied? It's, it's what they identify as now. -bodied. Jesus fucking Christ. Fat-bodied. Um, now see. we're talking, you got trans ams up there. <laughs> and I mean cars, not YouTube relax. F-bodied activist, maybe. Just put fat activist in, Ben. Don't start getting fucking fancy with your Reddit terms. Let's get a fat activist here to tell us what the deal is. Mm -hmm. Tess Holiday, but it's an hour. I can't. It's too long. Okay, this is the difference between body positivity and fat activism from Nylon. Go to this. I'm interested. I want to learn because this is another community. I've, the gays have left me out. Now these people have left me out. Should I do this? I'll do this. What do I have to say? Everybody should be a bowling ball. <laughs> Hi, my name is Virgie Tovar, and I'm the author of You Have the Right to I don't to have to fuck fat. fat people, right? Because that's my only problem. But I'll get on the board with everything else because I think people should have to fuck me. Keep going. Okay. Is this what it is? If fat activism is just forcing skinny people to fuck us, I'm into that. If, that's, if this is a clever workaround saying that you have to fuck me or I'll kill you because you're, uh, uh, <laughs> that's fine. If that's what fat active, because I genuinely don't know what it is. So if it's just shaming thin people into having sex with fat people, I am for that. Keep going. I talk about the differences between body positivity and fat activism or fat liberation. What I've found since body positivity has eclipsed fat activism is that positivity seems to be the biggest I guess, demand of the movement. The right. thing is that positivity isn't exactly a political resource. So it's important as we're thinking about moving forward as a political movement, what do we really want? Yes. And in fat activism, the demands are pretty clear. Okay. Body positivity doesn't have that same Well, let's go with the focus. activists. If they're gonna be a part of a political movement, you need to know what the purpose, Tell what the vision, and what the plan of that yes, movement is. Yes, what is the plan? An issue I have with body positivity is that the face of it becomes increasingly whiter, straighter, and thinner the more that the movement gains traction. Right. People of all sizes, all shapes, all ages, all abilities, all genders experience body shaming. However, right, like when we're consistently focusing on the people who have the least experience with structural discrimination, we Did end up doing ourselves a disservice a politically. We have to really focus on who is the person who is most affected by this issue. We all benefit when we think about the person who is having the greatest impact. Third, as body positivity eclipsed fat activism, the question of the movement kind of went from how do we create more rights and a life free from discrimination for people of all sizes to how do I love my body? Both questions are very important, but in okay. isolation, well, right? I, I, I'm, again, I'm, I need to know what fat activism is because they're fat activists. Sometimes if you lose weight, they, they get mad because mm. you've betrayed, you've made them feel worse by losing weight. Mm. I am so confused as to what this is. Cause I went on a rabbit hole about this after I was accused of being fat phobic. Imagine. And I'm trying to find out what fat activism is because I may be for it. <laughs> Do you understand? I could be a very powerful resource. There are a lot of, there are a lot of listeners out there and viewers, and I am for fat activism as long as I don't have to touch another fat person. Mm -hmm. So let's find out what it is. I don't want to touch a fat person, but tell me what fat activism is because I may join it.
So we, we may find out at the, at the end of this video, you think? Let's see. The question of how do I love my body is not complete. How can we think about this not just as an individual experience, right. but as kind of a collective one? Indeed. And the way that we do that is we sort of start to think about, you know, again, who are the people who are experiencing the greatest impact of discrimination based on body? And when we kind of think about that, we expand our frame of reference and our political power and our political might beyond just one person to something that can have this extraordinary ripple effect on a cultural level. And and finally, body positivity, she goes, body and justice. Finally, queso. <laughs> How great would that be? If she goes, and finally, queso. Okay, let's let's finish this. But I, I'm still, you haven't done what I've asked. I want to find out what, what fat activism is. And this is not telling me what it is. Yeah, is it's not, telling it's me it's vague. differentiating body positivity from fat activism. But I need to know what fat activism is. I believe it is that we cannot – here's what I think it is. I think it's that fat people get to go around <laughs> killing thin people, which I'm not against per se – My only problem with overweight people, and I don't have any because I am an overweight person, mm. but my only problem with fat people is that I don't want to I don't want to have sex with them because I feel like it's Monique had that joke. Two fat people, she had a great joke. I'm trying to find your shit. You're trying to find my shit. Let's just go to, uh, uh, let's get a fish sandwich or something. It was yeah. very funny. Mm. And, and I'm just, uh, but I want to be involved in the fat activist movement while mainly... Spending my time with with twinks who are kept on a treadmill and, and stuffed with Adderall, but only because it's I feel like that someone needs to show them respect too. But we're not we've 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 not been able to find what if what fat activism is. It says we the plane seats need to be bigger, and right, and that fat yeah. people have to be celebrated, mm. and, and which is great, and they have to be on the cover of magazines. Mm. And things like that. Think but see, that. you're with fat acceptance. But go to fat activism is what we want. Mm. It's also known as right here. Oh, okay. And th there's third wave fat activism. You can't find one thing on YouTube about this. Uh, it's mostly like Dr. Rhonda Patrick clips, Rogan clips. Who's not a doctor. Can we move on, please? <laughs> She's never seen a patient. I mean, enough with her, please. Uh, an answer for what is fat activism. Mm -hmm. And this answer I like very much. We're going to share it uh, with the audience. Anyway, so what fat activism is for me, um, I've been thinking and about and working on the question, what is fat activism daily? Not very much for the past sort of 25 years or so, you know. I still don't have an easy answer. Um, and it's a question that I came to in my master's dissertation, which was published as my book, Fat and Proud, in 1998, which was ages ago now. And I returned to it for my PhD, which was a four-year research project that I finished last November. And during that project, I interviewed about 30 fat activists around the world, people of all different backgrounds and perspectives, many of whom had decades of experience in, in uh, fat activism. And nobody gave me a consistent answer about what it actually is. Because they were chewing. And so given this, it made sense to me that fat activism can be absolutely anything. It just really depends on the context. Well, I like that. And this makes fat activism really exciting because Indeed. it means you can tailor it. <laughs> you can tailor it to what you're interested in. Yes. Or the things that you enjoy or the things that you're good at or yes. very, very specific moments in your life. Yes. And so I kind of thought that so fat activism So if I'm just being be fat and rude and nasty in the lobby of a hotel... Because I've come down a few minutes after the the breakfast has ended. And I'm really giving it to the people that work there. And I'm giving it to them good. Is that, this sounds like that is fat activism. Well, I like that. If I throw a fit at Enterprise Rent-A-Car, because the car they gave me is what I consider to be uh, too small, that is fat activism. I'm now coming around to this and enjoying it.
Let's let's watch a little more. Something really big, like a street protest. That's the thing that most people think of as activism when I talk to people about it. Or a letter writing campaign, that kind of thing. And it can be as small as a wink. A wink directed at the right person at the right time. Yes. Well that's that I that I like. What she's basically saying is we don't need these street protests where everybody has to walk and chafe, but a wink, a well placed wink. <laughs> is fat activism. Wink, I will wink and make people uncomfortable, and I think that's a good barrier of entry. It's low. So the idea is that a well-placed wink to the right person is fat activism. So let's say, okay, if I, and I've actually done this, right? I've been in 7-Eleven, and I was eating the big un- the Big Un is a cheeseburger that you heat in the microwave. <laughs> and you take it out of its wrapper. And I've been with the Big Un in 7-Eleven eating it, you know, putting the pickles from the condiment bar on the Un and squeezing ketchup on it and biting it. And if I choose to wink at the cashier, I'm engaging in the important work of fat activism. Let's see what else. This is really... This is uh, beautiful. <laughs> like and it can involve changing laws, but it can also involve having a conversation with somebody or wearing something good. And sometimes it's about refusal of dominant cultural values, and sometimes it's really, really ambiguous. Some fat activists try and draw lines about what is and what isn't fat activism. But I think that kind of ideological purity is completely overrated. And I'm interested in those kind of hybrids um, that people develop for themselves and kind of try and draw in to make livable lives. Um, my fat activism is a part of my daily life. I don't Correct. put on a as uniform or an outfit well. or something special to do it. Right. Or go somewhere. Me too. Um, it's really embedded in the way that I think about things, Indeed. the work that I do, the yes. people I know. Yes. It's there in how I walk and how I talk. Yes. And I don't see much separation between activism and life. Right. Um, Okay. You could think of it as a kind of consciousness. Yes. Um, sometimes I do stuff that's more recognisable as activism. Oh, so is it good? I make things. Yes. I make zines, which are small homemade publications. Okay. Like this one, which I have for free. You can have a copy <laughs> afterwards if you want. And sometimes I write and publish things, like my book, and I've published stuff in... Well, I'm on, on sitting on the board for the, the Fat Studies Journal. It's an interdisciplinary journal of body weight and society. There's a mouthful for you. How do you get in and that? contribute to books like the Fat, the Fat Studies Reader. Okay. And also our own beautiful Fat Studies in the UK, which Karina co-edited. So I do stuff that is activism. And sometimes my activism is very small and subtle, can be something like breathing or, or thinking or... Um... Hold on. This woman just said her fat activism was the act of breathing. <laughs> that she could just be somewhere breathing and she's being an activist. Isn't that, isn't that sort of proving that being fat isn't healthy if breathing is activism? Aren't you giving away the game there a bit? If you know, my fat activism sometimes is very simple. It's slow breathing or getting out of a chair. Doesn't that suggest that being overweight is potentially <laughs> unhealthy. I'm no doctor, neither is Rhonda Patrick, but I still think that there's something about breathing as activism that denotes probably not the healthiest lifestyle. But again, what do I know? But all right, let's we we've had enough. Thank you. We get we kind of get it now. It's everything, it's nothing, it's breathing, it's winking at people. Whatever you want to do. Plus size models sent death threats by fat activists after dieting. This is what I like. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what I like. I like this. Yeah. 
I like a fat person threatening to kill a f another fat person who's started to get thinner. <laughs> That, to me, is an interesting type of person and one that I want to know more about. The person that Rosie Mercado, who used to be a size 24 and is now a size 12 to 14, still fat, right? Good. Was told to jump off a bridge and kill herself by people <laughs> <laughs> with people <laughs> who objected to her slimming down. The 36-year-old told TMZ, I got hate mail. Not so much from other models, just fans that hated on me. Wow. They hated the thought that I was really public about my weight loss and I was losing weight. She lost more than 170 pounds. Some people love being overweight. Some people don't. That's what she says. I think it's a personal choice, but people were not happy. They were sending her threatening. They were threatening. They were telling her to kill herself. Oh, she was 410 pounds, too. She was 410 pounds, and then she got... And she lost 170 pounds. Well, she's down to 170 now, yeah. No, go up. Oh, wow. She's 170. Wow, good for her. She went from four. No, no, no. <laughs> no. No good for her. No. You skinny piece of shit. She's a Benedict Arnold. There is a movement of fat activists. That do activism by breathing. Heavily, yes. But she's... I can't believe you would say that and be so heartless. The people that loved her as a 410-pound model want her to kill herself <laughs> and jump off a bridge because she's now down to 170. The only reason I'm not afraid of that is people are telling me to kill myself anyway. <laughs> They're saying it now.